garbage in, garbage out is so important when it comes to using LLMs. Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. It's me, Daniel. Happy that you're here today. Finally, it's maybe happening that shift left testing with AI is becoming more attention than it has become in the last years. Why I'm talking about this? I mean, you've seen it in the title. Maybe shift left testing is now finally with all the prompts that we put into LLMs, a bigger attention. And what do we mean with that? I mean, well, if you have seen some of the videos before on my channel, if not, you can do it down below. Subscribe to my channel, of course, as well. You have seen me talking about prompt engineering, how to use different prompt techniques in order to generate bug reports, or how to generate test cases, how to generate test automation, how to migrate work from one language to another and stuff like that. And with all the things that I've said, it's really important that you give high quality context into an LLM and good question, good prompting, because garbage in, garbage out is so important when it comes to using LLMs in the way as we would like to use and software testing or development or product management, for example. So if you put bad prompts in, you get bad output as well. And that's why I had the idea about that video to talk about shift left testing in AI. And if you don't know anything about shift left testing in general, make sure to check the link down below. I made a video about that topic quite some time ago where I explain what is uh, what it is all about basically. I bet your browser looks the same way sometimes, especially when you're doing a specific research on a topic. Well, isn't that frustrating? You can't find the right information on the right tab again. And at the same time, it's a time consuming effort. The time of endless browser tabs and time consuming research is finally over. One prompt window is enough for you. Manos AI is here for you to do the hard work. Manos AI agent is built for deep research. It doesn't just think, it delivers results in no time. Just type your question. Manos can plan the work, reads the web and produces actual outputs tailored for you. For example, a web page, spreadsheets, slides, even code and test automation script. The great thing about Manos, you can see the agent in action. You can share the results with your peers. You have full control. As you can see, I entered a specific testing prompt into Manos AI. For such a complex topic, Manos can go wide spinning up to 100 parallel agents to cover the landscape fast, then roll everything up into a sortable matrix or report. Prefer depth? Switch to quality mode and get a multi-page analysis with dozens of cited sources and results. Each session runs on a dedicated cloud computer, so the agent can browse, write files and assemble deliverables, not just chat. Manus treats the file system as a long-term memory, writing and reading notes as it works. Manus is calling it wide research. It is a system-level mechanism for parallel processing and protocol for agent-to-agent -agent collaboration. And the best thing, wide research gets automatically activated when your prompt indicates a deeper research. For example, look at this prompt. Please conduct a thorough analysis of the test automation landscape within the S&P 500 companies and compile a detailed report on the top 50 most adopted frameworks included their primary use cases and language support. There are no research limits when using Manos. Here are some more examples. Many teams worldwide use Manos for all kinds of deep research and tasks, for example, market and competitor research 
pulling signals from hundreds of data sources for literature reviews, industry briefings and product teardowns. It's built together, compare and fact check at scale. If you want to research that ships itself, try Manos AI. Hit the link below or go to manos.im and let the agent do the heavy lifting for you. A big thank you to the Manos AI team for sponsoring this video. And now back to the main video. So is shift left testing finally accepted by the community or by the developers or by us? Because whenever we are talking about, hey, we need to do shift left testing, uh, testing early in the process, I have heard many people in the community talking about that topic on conferences in teams and stuff. But to be honest, there's usually never enough time to really implement shift left testing in software development teams and in the testing process because there's so many other things that have higher priorities and higher focus. I'm totally fine with that. I totally get that. However, shift left testing is really an important technique or an approach that you should use in your life cycle because it gives you a good insight in early steps or in early phases of the development practice. You can talk about risks early enough. I mean, watch the videos I've done before. Yeah. And now finally, with AI, it might get a bigger attention. And why I'm talking about that? Well, it's because we are using so many prompts on a daily basis to tell LLMs what they should do or what it should do, basically, to generate code, generate test cases, migrate from one language to another, and stuff like that. But have you tried different prompts for the same task that you would like to achieve or for the same goal you would like to achieve. So for example, if you have used um, two different prompts to generate test cases, I bet not. But maybe this is something that you should consider. And that's why I would love to talk about this topic is so important, right? Because I mean, LLMs are powerful, they're trained on different data sets, but they might be wrong. And that's why it's important to really take your time in writing good prompts. Because the LLMs, they have some, I would call it flaws, right? So they can be biased. So they could be detected bias. So they reveals hidden biases in AI responses by testing prompts against human influence training data. We all know that LLMs are trained on big data sets from different companies, from different backgrounds, from different industries and countries and stuff like that. So they might be biased. So that's why it's so important to also think about prompt testing. Yeah. And of course, the accuracy is really important to check, right? If it identifies factual errors or logical mistakes or even simple tasks can be going wrong with using LLMs. And that's important why we should focus on prompt testing as well. And why is it so important? Because I made that video for you. And last but not least, what I would like to talk about on that slide, it can boost your performance. Like it could improve the response, the quality through diverse and consistent prompt testing. So that's why it's so important to think about prompt testing in your company, in your role, in your current state of the product. So here are some methods of prompt testing that I brought for you today. First of all, you could do like a simple A-B testing on prompts. So test prompt variations to find the most effective version. As I said before, you would like to generate some test cases. You have one prompt, you get to the result, you might be happy, but might, there might be like some little tiny tweaks on the prompt, give more context, uh, change the wording and stuff like that. You might get better results. So A-B testing might be helpful for you in order to test your prompt. Semantic analysis. So you have to evaluate how relevant and coherent AI responses are. So really check the outcome. What is the outcome of the response? Is it something that you could um, you could identify something has been wrong in the prompt, stuff like that. User feedback. So collect insights from users on prompt generated outputs to identify if the prompt was helpful or not. This might be especially a case when you are designing your own assistants or agents, right? So you, you have a system prompt, a mega prompt that you defined and this mega prompt or system prompt is basically feeding and giving instruction to an assistant or to an agent. Then you could ask the, the, your users, like, hey, is this agent really working for you? There is another variant with a changed, um, with a changed prompt as well. So this is something you should take into account as well. 
automated testing of full course so you can run large scale prompt evaluation using tool or scripts. Fire up, I don't know, hundreds of prompts to your LLM in an automated scripted way to see what's the best performance on the prompts in terms of speed and stuff like that. And then of course you can do like cross model model evaluation. So you compare the prompt performance across multiple AI models and with performance, I mean, not the out, the, like the speed in how fast the NLM is generating the output, but rather than what is the, the result of the generated text or of the generated code, for example, use the, your favorite LLMs out there. You can do like on the public side, you can use ChatGPT, Claw, Gemini and others just to give your prompts in and see what is the outcome of the trained model as well and also of the data. And last but not least, scenario testing that you can do. So use targeted scenarios to access prompt to assess prompt effectiveness. So that's also what I meant before with similar close to A-B testing. Set yourself a target scenario, what you would like to achieve with the prompts and then compare the, compare the results. So what are advantages of prompt testing? Well, first of all, it's great efficiency. So you can optimize your prompt to use to save time and resources, especially resources is important here, right? If you have your own private LLMs running in your data center, for example, or somewhere in a cloud, computing time gets more and more expensive yeah, with AI. And that's why it's important to check the prompt for efficiency, for time efficiency and stuff like that. Yeah. So improved experience, so enhance accuracy and relevance of responses. That's also a big advantage, yeah, to improve the experience, the user experience, the result experience and stuff like that. So really tweak little tiny nuances to, to see how they affect the results. You can reduce risks, so flag potential issues and biases earlier, right? As I said before, the, the LLMs are trained with different data sets. They might be different biased. So that's why it's important to check with your prompts on different LLMs, on different training data sets, what are potential issues that can, can come, come around the corner. Yeah? Uh, smarter refinement. So you can use the data, use data to guide prompt improvements. That's also important. Yeah? If you know the data set that you would like to use in order to generate test cases, test code and whatnot. Um, if you have knowledge about the test data, together with the prompts that you put into the system, you get much better improvement, uh, improved outputs. Yeah. What are the challenges? Well, there might be some challenges, of course. There are subjective standards. It's hard to define what makes a good prompt in certain cases. That's really something that you should take into account. You write a prompt for a specific, um, for a specific task. You could ask your colleague, hey, please write me a prompt for that task and then compare and see what he or she is going to do. And this is a big challenge, right? If you hand over tasks to a specific person, and this person has a different uh, tone of voice, a different writing style. This might be a challenging task in prompt testing, but also in the outcome of the prompt. Yeah? So it's a high resource demand. Testing can be time and compute intensive. What I meant before, resources are really um, um, covered by LLMs like uh, GPU, CPU power and stuff like network capacity and stuff like that. So calculation is really something. And if you like really to invest into prompt testing, it's time consuming. It's nothing that you can do like, okay, do it once, do it twice, can automate it. It's really manual. Try, uh, try and, and, and tweak the, the prompts to see what's the best outcome. And then of course it's compute intensive. Yeah. Uh, model dependency. Prompt results may differ across models and versions. As I said it before, there are a couple of models out there. I mean, even hundreds of models out there uh, and, and, and that were trained on different data sets and they can vary. And then between the data sets, if they have an update on the trained data set or the model was updated in terms of versioning. I mean, we have seen the, all the versions coming out lately from the big brands. You could, you have to verify your prompts on a different versions as well. Similar to when you were testing mobile apps, for example, or your product on different browser versions. Same here. If your model is changing, you have to check your prompts again for accuracy, the output, stuff like that. So it's a big challenge. Overfitting risks. So over optimization may hurt broader performance. This is also something that you should take into account. Don't overdo the tweaking of the prompts. 
if a prompt and the second and the third version of the prompt still delivers a good um, result for you, go with that and see how it evaluates over time. Don't overdo it here. Yeah. Changing landscape. Testing methods must evolve with advancing AI. Yes, of course, it's always something that we need to do. We need to adapt to new technologies, to new changes, to new models, new ways of writing prompts, system prompts, or using agents in, in, in average, in, in, in overall average. Um, so let's have a look at the good practices in prompt testing. And I have two pages over here. So first of all, set clear goals. Define objectives and success criteria for each test because that's important. Otherwise, you will lose the focus. You, you tweak things, uh, you tweak sentences, you tweak the, 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 um, the arrangement of words in your prompt to see how it will affect the result. So define your goals, what you would like to achieve with prompts, the prompts that you need and with the prompt testing, and that will help you to focus on the outcome as well. Use diverse inputs. So it's important to test with varied prompts for broader coverage. So really see um, different input types, different input methods, like a REC approach, for example, or use different techniques, different languages. Maybe use um, another LLM to generate a prompt to see how the, how the generated prompt compared, compares with your own written prompt. Yeah? Um, standardized testing. So keep conditions consistent for fair comparison. That's important. So once you decided for a specific prompt that is, for example, generating your test cases and you made good results with that prompt, don't change it over the time. Keep it consistent and use it in, in updated versions of the LLM. Use it in different LLMs as well to see really to have a fair comparison on the output. Otherwise, it's not really good to compare. Define metrics. Use clear measurable criteria to assess performance something that is really up to you, up to your product, to your company, but it's important to define some metrics that you would like to achieve with the prompts and also with the prompt testing. Second page, uh, track the versions. So monitor prompt iterations and outcomes over time. I would highly recommend you in case you have, let's say five prompts that are there for you to generate your test cases or your requirements or your, your test automation, use versioning of your prompts as well. Make, uh, tr track it down somewhere on, on, on a wiki, on, on whatever page you would like to track it down. Write down, okay, prompt version, this was one, that was the exact, uh, that was the result. And then if you iterate, for example, with the models, but also if you iterate with the prompts, note it down to really track, to see and how it evolves over time. Um, of course, retest regularly. So re-evaluate the prompts to maintain effectiveness. It's important, what I said before, the models will change over time, so you might to change your prompts as well. Yeah. Um, engage users, so include reuse of feedback alongside automation. That's what I said before in the in the way you can use prompt testing. You really use user feedback, real customer feedback to adapt your prompting and your prompt testing techniques. Record everything, so record the processes, the results, and the key learnings for you because the models they change so fast these days. So that's why it's similar to track versions. Document what you have done, why you have done it, and see what has changed over time. Yeah. And that's it for today. So what are your thoughts on AI testing, shift left testing, and prompt testing in that particular case? I would really love to hear from you down below in the comments. I think shift left testing can become more important with all the wipe coding, wipe testing, what wipe not, and with all the generation that we can do with AI. So it's really important to keep in mind, garbage in, garbage out, the quality of your prompt is a success factor for your product and for your work as well. And with that, happy that you came in for this video today. As always, like it, share it, and subscribe it to support me. If you'd like to support me even more, check the memberships down below to support me on a monthly basis as well. Thanks for coming by and see you next time.